Hey guys, this is Down Phoenix, and what I'm playing today is Blaster Master Zero 2, which of course I just recently covered the first Blaster Master Zero. Be sure to check the link in the description if you want to see what that's like. So I decided naturally after beating the first game, I might as well go ahead and pick up the second game, especially since I did enjoy the first game. I figured this would be a good time to have since I had to take a long road trip and you know, it just would have been nice to have a game like this to kind of help pass the time, but I was more than pleasantly surprised at what this game actually delivered to me. This was more than I expected. I kind of expected it to be more of the same, you know, just be like maybe a few new weapons and things like that, but it ended up being a lot more than that, actually, and it really pleasantly surprised me. Um, first of all, of course, we have Sophia, who is now the Gaia Sophia, and has this new ability where if you want to regenerate your, uh, power-up, you have to do that. So you do a little ground pound thing, and it automatically regenerates your energy, instead of it just slowly but automatically doing it. So that gives the player more involvement in the way that you handle getting your power-ups, and if you're really good... And use, utilizing the mechanic, you can get your power up back really quickly. Um, but really the main thing about Blaster Master Zero 2 that I enjoyed is the way these dungeon encounters have progressed. Now for one, we have the different weapons here, but the weapons actually have a lot more variety than they did in the original Blaster Master Zero. And there's oftentimes reasons not to just automatically choose the best gun. Some weapons are better against certain enemies, even though they may not be the best weapon. They tend to be the best ones to go with in some cases, although obviously the level 8 weapon is going to typically be the best when it's available, so it's not a bad idea to stick with it. But another thing I really dig is this new blast counter maneuver right there, just like that, where I'm able to kind of like quickly evade enemy attacks and give them a counter attack essentially. It's a really neat mechanic that holds up very well in this particular game. I really dig this specific mechanic and it just, it made this game a blast to play for me. It really has. So I definitely recommend giving this one a check out if you, for some reason, uh, never enjoyed the first game or if you enjoyed the first game but you're wanting more, this is definitely going to be something you'll want to, to scoop up for sure. So I highly recommend this game, but that being said, you know, it's not, like I said, it's not just a case of it's just more of the same. This game has a lot more going for it. The dungeon level designs are a lot better, uh, a lot more variety in the enemies. There's just more, but not in just more of a, oh, this is like more of the same. This is like just more than that. Like, like, even, like, the very first boss encounter, this is, like, the very first boss that you encounter unless you go out of order like I did. I actually beat the boss right after this first, uh, since you can, but I had to do this boss encounter. So, like, because of the different mechanics, like the counter mechanics and stuff like that, uh, there's just a lot more interesting battles. There's a lot more going on. And it's kind of wild to think that the first two battles of this game are like more interesting to me than pretty much every battle in the first game because the first game the boss encounters were like way too easy which i know i probably didn't bring it up in my review uh playthrough but that is the case you know it really was just way too easy and obviously i'm kind of wrecking this boss but i get my weapon fully powered up so obviously these earlier bosses you're still gonna be able to wreck them but it's going to be a lot more interesting, and you got the different mechanics you're utilizing, like the blast counter mechanic, which I missed right there. Um, it just has a lot more going for it, and I really appreciate what NT Create has done. Like I said, they could have gotten away with just making a more of the same kind of game, but they weren't content with that. They wanted to give us something that really added to the formula and really enhance the player experience and i really appreciate them doing that so if you liked the first blaster master zero definitely pick this up you need to pick this up right away if you have it for some reason because it is better across the board uh, and even if you didn't like it 
you may still like this one better because the first game admittedly did feel a bit like a remake of the first game, which, I mean, if you played the first game back in the day, it's like not that big of a deal, but this game really feels like a true sequel with the enhancements that you expect from a sequel and even more so. Uh, to that degree, I need to get some health for my Sophia tank because it's about to die. <laughs> but uh, I, I just can't recommend this game enough if you're a fan of Blaster Master or if you're just a fan of Metroidvania style games in general. This is one that you really will find a lot of value in. I really think so. I found a lot of value in it personally. I love Metroidvania games, obviously, but this was one that. Uh, I really enjoyed more than I expected I would. You know, I just, like I said, it, I thought it was be more of the same, but it ended up being much more than that. So I highly recommend picking this one up if you get a chance, of course. You know, if you have Nintendo Switch, as far as I know, it's a Switch exclusive. I don't think it's on anything else. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, but till then, Down Phoenix out.